every single colony is looking absolutely fantastic look at this so they're all flying really really well Greetings on this lovely, sunny October day. I'm at this apiary, you may have seen this in my videos. I call this the Moulin Apiary, the Mill Apiary, because it's the site of an old mill there. And down there is behind the house is where uh, they used to have all the workings for the mill and everything. But this is like years and years ago. It's been uh, just a private house for, for uh, about 30 years now. But uh, I've come here and I'm really delighted. Just look at this pollen coming in here, look. This was a late nuke I requeened, for example. All the hives, got loads of pollen. Pouring in through the door. And it's the same everywhere, so I'm really, really pleased. And incidentally, the reason why I've come here is because this is the, oops, well caught. This is the apiary that had all the pollen sub on as a kind of trial because I gave pollen sub to every single one of these about three weeks ago. I haven't been back since, it's the first time I've been back. You can see they're all looking great. You can actually see the yellow of the entranceway there. It's actually stained the entranceway as they've been bringing in the pollen. And if you can see that, it's absolutely amazing. But that's good news because this was a nuke that I requeened late. And the one next door, the one over there with the polyth, the foam in the doorway, that was the one that I totally Gay frames of brood two from the colony next door and the one here and the one here. And they're obviously looking pretty good now. So look at that pollen going in. But that's recovered, I can tell that straight away. I might even take that foam out now and put the main door back on. And I know there's a flow running because you can really smell it. And we know the smell of ivy. So that's good, you know? all down there wherever you look it's good news so what i'm going to do today is i'm going to open up a few hives and we're going to um have a look inside each one and see what's happened to the pollen sub if it's all gone and if it has gone i'm not going to give these anymore but if it's completely gone and it's all good news i'm going to um go to my next apiaries because we've just had an update on the forecast and it looks like we're actually going to have much higher temperatures than we said, so the bees are still going to be able to fly. And to me, when the bees can fly, that's when you can still give pollen sub. So to me, the, the, main, the main thing to consider is, are the bees going to fly? And if they are going to fly, how long have they got before they stop flying? And that's what you should be planning in your management of when the last time to give a pollen sub is. Because I know that if I put a pollen sub on a strong colony, and it's not a lot, it will be gone within two to three, maybe five days. And that is, that is useful to know, because then you know when you can and cannot put that on. I don't want the pollen sub to be on over the winter. I want it to be gone, because I, what I'm going to do is I haven't got little eeks that I can, or I haven't got cram boards I can flip over and leave like this much gap above the brood nest in the winter. And that's something I want to really consider making or getting hold of. Because I know, uh, for instance, Mike Palmer, when he's finished his feeding and at the end of their goldenrod flow in America, he actually flips over his crown board so that you've got about maybe half an inch above um, the top of the frames. Now that half an inch means the bees can move over between frames easily and they can cluster well in the winter. And I really like that because they don't fill it with, with uh, they don't fill it with, um, with wax and, and honey because that's all stopped coming through the door. It's something you do last minute. But it also means if you want to get an early pollen sub on or a late pollen sub before they finish it, then you can. Okay, in this case, what might happen is they might fill that area with uh, stores, you know, nectar and honey and all that. They might fill it with that and I might have to come along and, and take it off. But 
the whole thing is to try different things. That's what I'm on about. I'm trying this pollen sub because I'm really convinced that it will help in so many ways. Not just the fact they'll have plenty of protein to raise brood. It just gives that colony less, um, less issues. It's stronger against disease. It's stronger uh, overall. The, the queen won't reduce her laying as much because she feels she's got those resources there. You know, it, it, it's so obvious to me that, that, it, that it's a bonus. Um, I'm not telling everyone to go out and buy a pollen sub. I'm just trying it here in my area to see if it's going to work for me in this particular place. And I think it will. And, the, and as I said, the under, other underlying major, major reason is I, didn't, I haven't done it before, but last year I had a really bad problem with winter losses. I, I'm just ironing out all the issues and that's what I have to do, you know? So um, this is what it's all about. It's about pushing those limits, getting your finger out when you've got a bit of time off to just keep going, keep the energy going so you're putting everything in for your bees and just working away and trying to make your colonies stronger, healthier, better. And it starts right here. And I've got time now to, to influence the way they develop and I'm going to still carry on and try and, and influence that more if I can. That's the whole reason behind it. So let's get on and do a few hives. So I've got a couple of nukes here in this yard that I, as I said, I made up late. And I just want to have a look because I, I know these are absolutely amazing. They've done so well, they've recovered so well, the feeders are empty. They're really heavy, which I'm delighted about. I mean, really, I, I don't really need the feeder on these anymore. And I do use these feeders because they do work for me. Um, you know, I think they're great. But let's just have a little look in here. Get some smoke. Full of honey. Absolutely looking great. So I don't really like doing this, but because I can, I will just have a little peek at some of the frames. A little bit of pollen sub there that's left, that just goes in the field. Just make a little bit of space we can be really careful you remember there's nothing worse than killing a queen this time of year because basically you kill the colony you know just to see what the state of brood is and <laughs> way too much brood look at that you know but they're looking rather special this nuke there's no room for the queen to lay at all wall-to-wall -wall brood that's about to hatch that brood you can just see beautiful it doesn't mean that all my colonies are like this because obviously a young nuke is different to an older established queen but it's pretty likely that they're fairly good you know so what do I do with all that brood do I give it another pollen sub well I probably will because I've got it here and it's and it's they're gonna have flying weather so Every frame is packed to the gunnels. Look, you can see where the brood's hatched out. They've just replaced it with, with honey, which is exactly what they should be doing this time of year. Now, I like this. This is nice, you know, nice bees. There's our queen. She hasn't marked this one. You can see her there. If you can see her there, she's running around pretty well. But I'm not going to mark her now because I haven't really got time. I could do. She is still laying, but she hasn't got a lot of space. So, what a lovely nuke. That's five frames of bees and brood and stores. Obviously, there's only two or three frames of brood, which is fine. I don't want any more brood this time of year. But because there's plenty of bees and because it's still going to be flyable weather, I'm going to give them another pollen sub because I want them to use it up. Let's see what happens. Let's put this on. This one I'm going to cut in half. There's plenty of bees there that are going to hatch. It's going to leave this on like that, close this up so that I can uh, come back in a few few days, take the feet, well, I'll leave the feeder off now, come back in a few days and take this all off, take this extension off that we leave on 
and then we'll be done for the year. So that is, as far as I'm concerned, completely ready for the winter. So that was purely just to, for me to see what kind of brood we've got. And alarmingly, there's an awful lot, which is good and bad, because it means the colonies that were really hit hard after I split them late summer have recovered really well. So it's pleasing, very pleasing, you know? Okay, so this was a, a very weak colony that I boosted with bees. I just had enough bees to boost it. Then I came back and boosted it again with some more bees and I gave it a queen once those nurse bees had hatched out. And that's warm already that. Above the feed is already warm. So I gave them pollen sub, look. Two places, here and here. The pollen sub has gone. Brilliant. Nice bees. Not an enormous colony, but certainly much more established. Look at that, absolutely beautiful. So let's lift this off and have a little look at while we can. Take our time, go slowly. I'm gonna use a bit of smoke just to get the bees off. So this is an empty frame, that's got stores in it. They're growing, I can see honey, 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 honey. Oh, this is nearly ready for the winter. But I'm gonna give it a pollen sub because I can and because they're a young colony. And um, let's find my smoke, which is actually finally got going. So I'm just going to move these bees off the top. See what's going on. Let's assess this colony and see what it's got. This frame is still light, but there's honey in there. Nectar in there all around the top. So that's good. Considering how small they were when I, when I boosted it, they've done very well. Let's see how much brood we've got that's going to hatch out, if there is much. I imagine there probably is. This is the pollen frame they're storing. Full of nectar, full of stores, full of pollen, natural pollen there. I'm very happy with that, nice to see that. The other side is even better. This could have stayed in a nuke, but there really isn't quite enough room for a nuke. So, a little bit feisty. There again, it is nearly winter. Here we are, here's the brood frames. So I know that all these bees are going to hatch out very shortly. And I know this is going to have more than enough bees to survive the winter. There's still some young larvae there, but all the rest of the frame has been backfilled. Pretty happy with that, and it stinks of ivy. So that's good, very good. Another frame of brood that is hatching. So this colony is really pushing out lots of young bees, so I'm very pleased about that. Look at that, that's way too much brood. But the flow is on, everything is good. Loads of young nurse bees on this frame, you can see them. They're all nice and small and like light in color, they're tiny bees. So that's lovely to see. And there is eggs in the cell, so we know the queen is here. That's good. Very nice. I don't usually assess these colonies much this time of year, but this is just the first apiary. Could it be that, because I gave the pollen sub three weeks ago, the queens were kept on laying? Possibly. Something to bear in mind. Fourth frame of, or third frame of brew, which is partial frame of brew. This side's got more, but it's hatched. And they're backfilling here with uh, nectar, which is good to see. So they have a nice lot of pollen stored in this frame as well. So I'm pretty pleased with that. But there is brood on this side and I haven't seen the queen yet. So she could well be on this frame or the other frame next door. But I know she's here, so I'm not going to spend time looking for her. It's not cold today, but there she's on the next frame here. So here she is. This is a good colony. You know, I'm very happy with this now. I could have just said, oh, it's finished for the year. That's just let it die. But I salvaged it because we had time. There's our queen. 
blue dot queen this year running around nicely there she is come on dear she's not as big as she will be in february march april next year when she starts really ramping up her laying she will get a longer abdomen then but uh nice to see her plenty of nectar on that on those frames so let's assess this again we've got also a frame of honey there on this one so the, to me i'm like one two three four five six six and a bit so that's still enough that's more than enough to survive the winter you know so let's put all this back together i know this queen is really gentle there's a few bees but there could be older bees still around from when i made the new cup Pretty unlikely, but there could just be a few left, and they could be the last of the bees from the previous colony. So I'm going to give this a pollen sub too because I can, and they'll probably take the whole thing down, and they're going to be flying. I'm going to cut this in half, or tear it in half, half on there, half on there, plastic back over. The great thing about these feeders is it still does insulate because you can put either pollen sub there or there underneath the pollen thing. So you end up with a nice little bubble for them, you know? And uh, then you can um, be sure that if you get back, if you don't get to them a little bit late, even if it goes cold, you can quickly whip back. You take off this, you're not really affecting the colony, then you can just whip off the plastic if you want to, straighten anything out underneath on top of the frames and put it back. But long term, I really do like the idea of having a, uh, a, um, of having a, a crown board I can put on and flip over at the end of the year, just so the bees can cluster well, you know? So I'm happy with that. I'm gonna leave that, I'm gonna leave that front on as it is for now and put the mouse guards on later, but they're, they're obviously, because I gave that the security of a tiny access hole, it was only that big, the access hole in the front. Because I gave that, that's really helped the bees, I'm sure, you know? So that's good. So I'm gonna carry on going down all of these, taking off the pollen thing, probably give them all the second pollen sub because I've got it. And I'll be able to compare any colonies next spring because I'm gonna do this to a couple of apiaries and see how they fare compared to the other ones. And that to me is gonna be the test. If I find that it really does help, noticeably i will see there's no scientific control and every apiary is slightly different but i will know because the the quality of cluster the quality of bees the build up in the spring will be changed i'm sure because of me giving them a pollen sub now or extra okay this is what we didn't have last year and i'm saying this again we didn't have this um bounty of pollen like we've got this year we just didn't have it last year and that's one of the reasons why I, my my bees really struggled and I lost a lot because there was no real protein to make young, you know, to make young bees. So immediately the bees, they're on a downer. So let's get on, I'm gonna do the rest of these, work through them all, and then I'll just have a quick chat at the end when I've done them all. So we're all done, it's very quick to do. Just lift off the, the upturned feeder. It doesn't stick down because it's been above the polythene. And you can immediately see what's gone on. If it's clean, you know you can add a second if you want to. Um, the amount of brood in these colonies, I'm like, yeah, well, it's kind of a two way thing. You kind of think, well, if I add more pollen sub, it might encourage more brood, but not when the weather's terrible and the temperatures start to drop, she's gonna slow her laying down anyway. The whole emphasis on this is getting that colony really strong and healthy and well fed with diverse pollens as well as what's coming in through the door but that's going to stop in a week or so but I know there's enough bees to process that pollen sub and I don't care what anyone tells me I know from looking at other resources 
looking at videos, look, reading books, that Pollen Sub is a really good supplementary feed if you think you need it. I'm not saying that everyone would do. I'm not saying at all that you should do it. But for me, I'm doing it because I think in certain years, we miss some of the vitality that extra nutrients could bring. And I am not gonna take those chances again. I can't do now, it's my only income. I've gotta look after these babies. I've gotta make sure that they are, they have everything they need if they're gonna to expect to perform for next year. I don't want just average bees, I want excellent bees. I want them to be non-swarmy. I want them to be strong and they'll, they'll be non-swarmy if they're low on mites, if they're strong and well fed, you know? It's all about enhancing what you can and I'm just gonna do what I can for my bees and keep that momentum going. Yesterday's pollen side went really well. Uh, I got two apiaries done, not as much as I'd hoped, but uh, I ran it kind of run out of time because I got stuck into other stuff at that apiary. But uh, you can see today we've got warmer weather and this is just unbelievable. I've just taken a few minutes of pictures and video to show you of what's going on, but we've got like 16, 17 degrees and everything is just balmy. It's a little bit breezy. So you've got to be a little bit careful when you're going around the apiaries because the, wee, the bees are like being blown into you when you're, uh, when you're actually trying to walk past the hives. It's not that they're aggressive, it's just they're just flying around like hell for leather, just trying to do stuff. But if you look here, I mean, the, the pollen coming in is unbelievable, you know? And you can't beat the real stuff. You can all talk about pollens up till the cows come home. But I mean, look at this, you know, it's just unreal. just absolutely fantastic to see the real stuff coming in the bees are in a frenzy they're really strong colonies these doors are the anti-hornet doors i talked about before uh, i've got these on because they're the same as mouse guards for the winter but the bees are still having plenty of access to and from the hive they're a bit crowded the doors but it doesn't matter it doesn't matter it's absolutely fine yeah, every single colony i've got left here is doing so well you know absolutely delighted so now i'm back off out to do some more pollen pollen sub on some other apiaries it's a little bit breezy and it might be some drizzle but with the temperatures like this and the flow that we've got it just gives you that absolute energy to just complement them with whatever you can so i've also had an update on the forecast we have got another probably two weeks of, of warmer temperatures so i'm going to use all the pollen sub i've got mixed up just get it on the next two days 
I was going to just do two apries, but now I've made the decision today. I'm going to go and get it all on and then I'll eat it all up and I've none kicking around over the winter and I'll be able to see if there's any real noticeable difference with pollen sub on colonies next spring because I'm sure I just feel that when you when you have um, bees that are so well fed and so super strong that's when they're going to just explode the following spring and that's what I want. When you just watch that front landing strip obviously you've got nectar coming in as well so you won't see the nectar but when you see the pollen on those bees going in every time it's just like a total this is all bonus every single bee leaving those flowers and coming back here with all that pollen is the complete bonus we just dream of so we're at another apron in the afternoon after popping back home just before to pick up some more gear you can see this apiary really needs the clean but it ain't gonna get done just yet because i've got to get this pollen sub on but what I've been doing, I've done these first three and they're absolutely fantastic, the first three. And then funny enough, the third one just there that I've just done, um, you would think there's no bees in it looking by the front, but they're completely full. It's almost like they've gone, we're fine, thanks. We don't need anything else because they're not even foraging, but different bees do different things at different times. But you can see what I do is when I go into the apron to avoid doing opening the same lid twice, which takes two or three minutes out of your schedule, I actually, um, you can see these bees aren't the nicest at the moment. What I do is I put the, the pollen sub on top ready and then I, when I'm ready to give it to them, I know it's just alongside so I swap one to the other. It just means I don't open the same hive twice and waste time. That's how I tend to work through things. All right, let's get this one finished. So that is done. 18 hives fed again with pollen sub. On to the next one. Let's go. See how many we can get done this afternoon. So we're at the next apiary. I've got all the pollen sub I need. Uh, to do this one as well before I go and collect a little bit more from the workshop on the way to the one after this. Uh, it's about four o'clock in the afternoon, so the bees are just starting to slow down a bit, but they've had a terrific day today. They were flying this morning since about 9 a.m., as soon as it was getting light enough. The clocks go back this weekend coming. So um, obviously it doesn't affect the bees, but it really shows how much the light level is falling and we're getting towards the end of the year. So these are gonna all have pollen sub as well. You saw me actually putting the feeders on here um, about three weeks ago. I haven't been back since, to be honest, because everything is so busy still, but I know they've taken down their feed and there was no need to come back to do anything. So what I'm doing again is I'm taking off that top feeder, breaking that seal, but I'm not opening these frames. I know what the bees are like. I've had a look at them already in the other colonies. I know that um, they are really, really good and strong. So um, it gives me a chance to assess any that are iffy as just by taking off the top cover, but then all I'm doing immediately is putting, the, putting that pollen sub, breaking it into two, and then um, putting the plastic back on top, which then separates the feeder from the uh, top of the bee, so that when I come to take the feeder off, the whole reason we're using the feeder, it just cushions the area above the pollen sub, but, but seals it. So that it means if I put the heavy roof back on top, it doesn't squash the pollen sub down. That's the problem I have right now is that I really need eeks or I need um, a crown ball that I can flip over. So I've talked about this before, but it's, it's another thing to consider I want to do. But why not just use the feeders? They work pretty well. You know, and that's what I'm trying this year. I leave the feeders on, I flip them over to put the pollen sub on and then I take them off when I'm when everything's finished. So I'll come back in, in say, a week's time, two weeks time if I can get in here and then um, that'll be it, it'll be done. And when I said if I can get in here, you can see just where my wheels start, the finish there, it actually gets softer. Now we've had a lot of rain the other day and it sunk in the ground because the summer was really dry. So I could possibly drive through here because I can come in that side behind those trees between that and the field and drive up here and that's what I do in the summer so it's fantastic and I can stop over there if I need to, I can stop here wherever I want. But right now we're at that point where it's like, the sun isn't very strong. For it to dry out the ground, we need it, we need it dry for, for days and days, and it's not. So you've got to be really careful. And there's nothing worse than getting stuck because it really screws up your whole day. And when you're trying to get like a lot of work done in a window in the weather, you really need to just get in and get out and go on. So this will be done in three quarters of an hour, the whole lot. But um, I want to just be able to do it. So I know if I reverse up to here, I can, see under those trees, it's pretty dry. 
and um, there's a lot of roots there, so I never sink in. I can always get here in the winter, but that's as far as I can get, but that's fine. That's far enough. I'm not lifting anything heavy. Well, even if I did my oxalic acid treatments here with the truck there, I could still reach it all with the leads I've got. It's no problem at all. Uh, you know, so that's just kind of to describe what you've got to be careful of. You can see it's already getting really soft, this ground. It's like, imagine if your wheels get stuck in that. The problem is actually that my wheels aren't actually grippy at the back. They're more road tyres and they just spin because it's rear wheel drive. So uh, the best thing will be to get knobbly tyres on the back, which isn't a big thing, but it's another expense to change. And when you're on the road, which I do tend to do quite a lot of road use with this, it's just getting that balance, you know. I think I talked about this when I was showing you over my truck. But, you know, you just got to get a balance. And I know where the limits are. That's the limit there for the moment. So I'll just get on with it here. So let's get these on. I'm going to put the camera down and do some time lapse so you can just get the idea. It's pretty quick. Well, that's done, but did you spot the one I missed? Because I did, I just watched it on the video and it was that one with the, the yellow roof, just, just there, just above my finger there now, that one. If you look at the video, you go back, you'll see it. <laughs> and I did that last time. It's obviously some kind of spooky thing in the ground that makes me forget that hive, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Anyway, uh, whatever you're doing, I'm going to go off to the next apiary and I'll catch you again soon. Take care. Bye for now.